Welcome, Eagles, to another episode of Trad Cat Night Radio. I am Eric Ajewski, founder and owner of Trad Cat Night, the most viewed and followed traditional Catholic website worldwide, ranked number one in the world as it relates to traditional Catholicism by Alexa. Top 20,000 website. Folks, can't thank you enough for all the prayers and support you give this apostolate. We just passed our three-year anniversary, and we continue to keep the ball rolling today. I want to make sure you all are subscribed to Tradcat Night right now. Make sure you click the bell, the notification button right next to it. Apparently, there's more loopholes being presented by YouTube, uh, limiting my videos getting out to you. So you got to make sure you're subscribed and you hit that notification button. And I want to thank all those who are picking up my articles and my radio shows now, including Veterans Today and other monster website. And wow, today is an exclusive talk, a blockbuster talk. And we are going to be covering Trump card played, the NWO advancement uh, as we continue to move further on in this endgame. So this information is not only important to Catholics, it's important to everyone. And having said that, we must keep in mind that we do so in charity. We're not trying to subjectively you know, send anyone to hell. We're not trying to paint those who are following Trump right now as quote-unquote idiots. We truly are not. We're truly just trying to, on the objective level, show you some history, show you really who Trump is. And I've said this when I've gone on radio shows. He's not being painted as he really is by the mainstream and the vast majority of alternative news websites. You know, with these elections, we simply have this illusion of choice, as David Icke has said. Uh, you know, a divide and conquer strategy now being employed. And I was thoroughly shocked that he got into office. Uh, I thought Clinton was going to get in. But I did say if Trump did get in, there's no question that he would be used uh, to stage the economic collapse and then the revolution to follow. And so that's essentially what we have to look forward to. I covered this actually in yesterday's talk uh, with my special guest. And so I, I know my guest, who's already been on, so he's re a returning uh, guest, David Dionisi, and he's the founder of Teach Peace Foundation. David's experience includes uh, service as a board member for Franciscan Works, senior executive for MetLife, direct advice, and New England Financial. Prior to working in corporate America, Dave served the country as an Army intelligence officer. His business and military experiences over the past 30 years are complemented by an extensive background as an international volunteer in Asia, Central America, Europe, and Africa. Dave is the author of the Vigilant Christian book series and producer of two documentaries, as many of you Catholics know, on uh, Akita and the Fatima Secret and The Secret of Nagasaki. I encourage you all to get to YouTube to look those up. But today, wow, uh, we've got the Trump card Played, and this is going to be a blockbuster, folks. So make sure you get this video circulated. Show it to your friends and family, your church members. Again, you don't even have to be Catholic. This is very timely and important information for everyone to know about. Dave, I really don't even know uh, where we begin. I know you wanted to kind of start off with an introduction with Matthew 24, uh, some scripture, but then maybe give us a, a little bit of a backdrop on the Brotherhood of Death and then we'll start tying it all together. Well, thank you, Eric. I, I think Matthew 24, 24 is, is perfect for this conversation because um, what we're looking at is a time where, in many respects, even the elect is being deceived. And I think if we take a look at exactly what it says in Scripture, uh, and then build on Matthew 7. Let me, let me start off with, For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch as to deceive, if possible, even the elect. So my understanding of that is all of us. I have to be careful. Everyone has to be careful of being deceived by Satan and, and the, this great deception. Now, we also know from the Bible that in, in Matthew 7, where we have Matthew 7, 18, a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can an evil tree bring forth good fruit. I want to make the point that while we should pray for our leaders, while we should be thankful that 
you know, things aren't worse. There, there could have been worse alternatives than, than Donald Trump. Um, we should not be looking at Donald Trump to be a friend of Christ. We should, we should look at the true history of who this man is, the fact that he's the third generation uh, member of a cartel known as the Brotherhood of Death. And let me briefly define that for everyone. Uh, the Brotherhood of Death is a group that has existed for a long time. It's called different names by different people. Um, Father Kramer once wrote a book called The Mystery of Iniquity. Yeah. It, it, it's the same group. It's a cartel that Satan has organized that uses blood oath secret societies that recognize no borders, laws, or rules other than their own. And they always require the death of members who violate their secrecy rules. This is why blood oath secret society insiders often refer to themselves as a brotherhood of death. This is why they often have a ritual where they, they go through the death of the person as they get elevated in, in society. And this group is so old that it actually goes back to ancient antiquity. It's explained in the book of Daniel and the Old Testament, the book of Revelation and the New Testament. And I wrote a book specifically, it's titled Defeating the Brotherhood of Death. And it provides concrete evidence that this cartel is real. What today would be very helpful, I think, is if we focused on Donald Trump as a member, why we know he's a member, and what he's likely to do because he's a member. Yeah, that sounds great. And, uh, you know, I'll have follow-up questions as you're presenting uh, information, uh, David, especially this notion that I've been getting the past few weeks. I don't know if you've heard this argument or not. They'll actually admit, you know, that he's a, a part of this cult and even admit he's a 33rd degree uh, Freemason. But they go on to say now that there are warring factions, kind of like a good mafia versus bad mafia. Uh, so they're now some uh, indicating that, yes, well, we agree that he's a part of this cult and, and, and a uh, part of Freemasonry. But now they're part of the, the good Freemasons, if you will, who are now attacking, you know, the Vatican Jesuits. I mean, what, what, do, you, what do you make of this? argument with all the, the, the extensive knowledge and background that you have. Okay. There has been um, wars within the secret societies. There's, there's famous documented wars between English Freemasonry and the French Freemasons. Uh, one of the, the key wars that is being fought at this time is between the Satanic branch, which would be the Palladium level Freemasonry and the Luciferian branch of Freemasonry. And while they ultimately both serve the same purpose, there are key differences. For instance, the satanic branch of Satan and his forces, they very much wanted to bring about a war. They wanted the proxy war in Syria to escalate into an all-out World War III scenario. The Luciferian branch, they prefer to demonize China and in the process increase their wealth and power. They want to avoid a war uh, with Russia. And this is one of the key differences between what would have been a, a Clinton administration versus uh, a Trump administration. Had the Clinton uh, presidency occurred, you would have seen the satanic branch increase in power and an escalation of tensions with Russia. Uh, now that that's not happening, what we'll see is the Luciferian agenda advance, which includes things like dismantling the Federal Reserve because they want to replace it with a one-world monetary system based on special drawing rights. They want to demonize China so that uh, China will be the fall entity for part of this uh, reason to move to this new monetary system. Um, you know, they, they want to increase their wealth and power. There'll be a greater polarization. There'll be a pillaging of, of the uh, wealth in the United States to help bring this about. And we can help prevent a lot of these bad things from happening by understanding that we have not elected the Savior, uh, and we've actually elected a person who for generations has been working against the Catholic Church. And uh, that's why I think it's important for us, let's talk about his grandfather, what he did, what his father did, and what Donald Trump will be doing. Yeah, I think that's a, a great start uh, in terms of getting more of the background, you know, the family tree of Donald Trump so we can kind of understand where he's coming from, uh, building up to Donald Trump. And then, as you mentioned, uh, you know, where are we headed? You know, wh what direction are we headed? 
Uh, we've already seen Trump starting to put some neocons in his, his cabinet, um, some people connected to the CFR and Goldman Sachs. So there are a lot of people kind of scratching their heads. They're, they're cautiously optimistic, uh, David. And I've always said, you know, pray for the best, but prepare for the worst. But I think you and I both agree that, you know, we're not deceived on Donald Trump. And that's why, you know, we have you on today. And we're going to specifically break this down. So wherever you would like to start, sir, and I'll just follow up with uh, questions and maybe add on some points. I thought that was very well said, and I, I, I realize this is going to be impossible for many people to believe, and that's why it's wonderful that if they go to the Trad Cat Night site, they'll be able to access the entire book, Village and Christian One, The New World Order, Trump Card Play, and you'll be able to take the time that you need, look at the pictures, examine the source information, and, and in that way realize what we're talking about is actually indeed real. Um, so I'll start off with Winston Churchill. This will be kind of interesting, but Winston Churchill is relevant because there's a category of uh, Freemasons that are secret Freemasons. So when we talk about the Brotherhood of Death, the largest Brotherhood of Death organization internationally is Freemasonry. They report members between four and six million uh, and, and virtually every country in the world. The Brotherhood of Death also includes smaller secret societies like Skull and Bones, Club of Rome. Um, they, they, it's basically the, the Brotherhood of Death are the blood oath secret societies that are committed to bring about a new world order. And so when we take a look at Donald Trump has not officially acknowledged that he is a Freemason, it's important to look at Winston Churchill and other secret Freemasons because sometimes it serves Freemasonry to keep this secret uh, until long after the person's died. And just recently, we had the, in, in, in England, we had the a Freemason Museum acknowledge that Churchill is indeed a Freemason. They released the names of over two million members, and uh, it, it was, uh, they also released the picture of his Masonic apron and some other uh, other things, regalia, and so on. And so <clears throat> people should not think just because Donald Trump has not stood up in front of an audience and said, I'm a Freemason, he's not a Freemason. What you have to do is look at the specific things that he has said and done that confirm his membership without saying, I'm a Freemason. Okay? And uh, when we if, start I could, if I could interject real quick, I, I don't mean to break a point, but for those Catholics listening out there, Dave and I were talking off the air, it's kind of similar with the situation we ha now have in the church. Uh, there's a lot of individuals scratching their heads because we see coming from the popes, popes all of these uh, Freemasonic principles and them giving the same hand signs. I mean, for example, Francis is giving off similar hand signs that uh, Donald Trump is giving off, the, you know, the 666 AOK -okay hand sign, which in my opinion uh, it directly ties with this Antichrist Maitreya. He has it right in on his statue. Um, and I, it's very similar. I just wanted to p point that out there. And that's why I, you know, I encourage you all to just sit back and relax. It's going to be difficult for you to absorb some of this information. But if you want to arrive at the truth, if you're a, a person of goodwill, these are things that we have to know and understand because it's important given where we are at now, in my opinion, how late we are in the, the end game, if you will. I apologize, Dave. I just wanted to, to point that out because I think it's, it's quite similar uh, because we have Freemasonry, which has infiltrated the church, and we're seeing a lot of these same hand signs that Donald Trump has given off. Uh, my expertise is really outside the church, uh, but I do know that there are infiltrations in the church. They have been historically um, documented, and... The reason why infiltrations in the Catholic Church are always by secret Freemasons is because the Catholic Church prohibits members from being Freemasons. Right. Uh, there's, there's an encyclical that um, I, I highly recommend people read. It's available on the Teach Peace website in the library. And it's uh, Pope Leo XIII's 1884 encyclical explaining that Freemasonry is secret, secretly at war with the Catholic Church. And what's amazing about that is if they go, if listeners go to that link, you'll also see the response to Pope Leo's encyclical by the head of worldwide Freemasonry. He, his name was Albert Pike, and right. in 1884, he issued a response acknowledging this war. So um, the, the key thing is <clears throat> when you look at 
more than hand symbols. Look at, at, at the family history, the relationships, the fruit of the person's life, who their spiritual leadership is coming from. You know, all these pieces, you're left with an overwhelming conclusion that uh, Donald Trump is in the service of the brethren. So let me go ahead and make the case. The beginning point starts with um, his mother's side of the family. His mother's side of the family has been connected to Brotherhood of Death Secret Societies going back thousands of years. Uh, they're officially considered guardians of these special uh, Klondus stones in Scotland. And his mother's family was very poor, so you don't see the wealth appear there. But she married his grandfather, and his grandfather was a wealthy man, and he made his money um, basically through booze and prostitution yep. and gambling yep. services. His, his father, it's significant to know, his grandfather, I should say, it's, it's significant to know, was um, Pimp Frederick Trump. He came from the Kingdom of Bavaria. And if you study the history of, of the Brotherhood Secret Societies, one of the more famous ones is the Illuminati, which was an actual real group that was headquartered in the Kingdom of Bavaria. So his grandfather, <clears throat> he comes to the United States and he's running prostitution, gambling, and business scams. Um, some of the, the operations were in Seattle, and then they moved up to Bennett, British Columbia. Uh, one of the more famous operations he ran was the Arctic Restaurant and Hotel, which was well known for off offering customers both booze and sex. Yeah, brothel, yeah. <laughs> So he was so wealthy that in, in, 18, in the 1890s, the single deposit that he made to his, his savings account was 80,000 marks, which is the equivalent of $582,000 today. Now, the, the, the grandfather, who is a Brotherhood of Death member promoting this anti-Catholic agenda, is followed by Fred Trump, who's a member of the Ku Klux Klan. And, and his, his father uh, was very much opposed to Christianity and viewed the Catholic Church as the enemy. And he was arrested for his, his membership and participation uh, in Klan activities. So he's got a father and a, and, and a grandfather. And, oh, by the way, I should backtrack. The Ku Klux Klan was a Brotherhood of Death secret society. It's documented in Vigilant Christian One in the book. Uh, you'll see that the key founder for the Ku Klux Klan was, again, Albert Pike. And that whole relationship's detailed out. So once you understand that the Ku Klux Klan was a brother in society, then you, you understand how his father was a card-carrying member of the, of the brotherhood. Yeah. Um, so his, 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 um, Donald Trump followed in his father's footsteps because his father was working with the mob, and it was Trump's mafia's associates that allowed him to become this you know, massive holder of real estate and gambling activities. And if you look at some of Trump's closest associates, one was an agent of the Philadelphia mob, one was a gambler convicted of, of uh, tax fraud um, connected to the mob, another was a union leader found guilty of racketeering, and a, and a fourth was a real estate developer uh, convicted in a, in a stock scheme that had connections both to the Israeli and Russian intelligence services, as well as officially working for the CIA. So let's talk about each of these guys for a little bit, and then we'll, we'll come back to some more supporting evidence for who Donald Trump really is. Can I uh, interject just real briefly sure. here? Uh, yeah, and I had F. William Engdahl, very credible, Wayne Madsen, saying the same very thing uh, just uh, a month or so ago. Uh, Dave, we covered this a little bit. We're not obviously we're not we didn't get into it as extensively as we are today. I want to play devil's advocate though. People are going to scratch their head and say, "Yeah, but Dave, D Donald Trump is being you know really nice and supportive of Christians and Catholics." Uh, what what would you say to this response? I mean, on on the surface level, it, it appears uh, that he's he's not being anti-Catholic. Is this just all part of the plot? I mean, what's the end game? How would you how would you answer? Your, your everyday person who would approach you on the street with that question. Donald Trump is the ultimate con man for the Brotherhood of Death. He has the charisma and the ability to 
uh, deceive people. And this is one of the reasons he was able to be elected. This is one of the reasons why so many people think he's the savior for the country and that he's truly going to make America great again. The real Donald Trump uh, can be seen through the lens of his spiritual advisor. Now, his spiritual advisor, according to Donald Trump, his own words, is Norman Vincent Peale. Right. Norman Vincent Peale earned a spot in Freemasonry's Hall of Honor for two strategic Masonic accomplishments. Um, and by the way, anyone visiting Washington, D.C., if you go to the, Mas the, the Masonic Temple 13 blocks north of the White House, um, you, can, you can visit and you can see this man's portrait in the Hall of Honor, Norman Vincent Peale. His accomplishments was he was the first um, to really bring out this concept of prosperity Christianity in the Protestant churches. Yeah. Uh, this is in direct opposition to the teaching of Jesus. And in fact, the, 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 the Jesus Peel taught was not the Jesus of the Bible. And he confused millions of people to believe that Christianity is a cult of success that puts the egocentric self above the love for God. Peel's Luciferian theology denied that God was a being and taught that the Masonic notion, it's a witchcraft notion, that God is energy, reducing God to a force. Uh, Peel openly denied Christ many times. He did it on television shows like the Phil Donahue show, and he hated the Catholic Church. Now, the, the, to, to explain his hatred for the Catholic Church, all you have to do is go back to when John F. Kennedy was running for president. In August of 1960, Peel was the leader who was seeking to organize other Protestants to prevent the election of John F. Kennedy. And uh, he formed uh, this group, it's called the National Conference of Citizens for Religious Freedom. And at that group, he was the chairperson of this group of Protestant clergymen. And they made the case that John F. Kennedy should not be elected. That he, Peel, a direct quote from Peel is, faced with the election of a Catholic, our culture is at stake. He was saying something true. The culture of the Brotherhood of Death was at stake. That's the culture he's referring to. So Peel's attack for the Brotherhood was centered on the message that Kennedy was unfit for the presidency because he was a Catholic. Mm. Now, you understand that Peel is the man that served as the, the minister for uh, Donald Trump's marriage. When he, yeah. he, if you look at him, he's the person that Donald Trump cites as the ultimate in terms of uh, you know, his understanding of quote-unquote Christianity. Um, it shines a lot of light on what's really going on here. And yep. you know, I'll just out a little more. If you look at uh, Peel, his criticism from the Protestant ranks, um, he was criticized for teaching the Luciferian doctrine. Uh, theologian Reinhold Nebler, the professor of applied Christianity at the Union Theological Seminary, observed, quote, Peel, this new cult is dangerous. Anything that corrupts the gospel hurts Christianity. An Episcopal theologian, John Crumb, he criticized Peel's heretical character, saying, Peel's teaching gives the impression of a thoroughly depersonalized religion. Very little is said about the sovereign mind and purpose of God. Much is made about the things men can say to themselves and can do to bring about their ambitions and purposes. In essence, Crumb's criticism is criticizing the Masonic Lucif Luciferian doctrine. Uh, Crumb even wrote, he said, the predominant use of impersonal symbols for God is a serious and dangerous invitation to regard man as the center of reality and the divine reality as an impersonal power, the use and purpose of which is determined by the man who takes hold of it and employs it as he thinks best. Now, for anyone who's ever read Albert Pike's book, uh, Doctrine and Morals, you're seeing information coming right out of the first chapter. And so... Um, how this relates back to Trump in a very powerful way shows up in what Trump says. Not just that he says Norman Vincent Peale is his spiritual advisor, but when Trump is asked questions like, has he ever asked God for forgiveness? Are you aware of his answer, Eric, when he was asked that question? Um, yeah, I was, I, was just, I was just about to interject uh, some of this. Yes, at the end he says, no, I have not uh, asked God for forgiveness. I think we're uh, on the same page here. Um, you know, in, in referring to uh, the quote-unquote great Norman uh, Vincent uh, Peale, who, as you mentioned, uh, married 
uh, him to one of his wives. But then he also had that in an interview with uh, Phil Donahue in 1984. He went on to say, it's not necessary to be born again. Uh, you have your way to God. I have mine. Uh, I found eternal peace in a Shinto shrine. I've been to Shinto shrines, and God is everywhere. Donahue then exclaimed, but you're a Christian minister. You're supposed to tell me that Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, aren't you? Peel replied, Christ is only one of the ways. God is everywhere. So, of course, we can see that he is a high-ranking uh, 33rd degree Freemason of the Scottish Rite. And uh, this is very important information for you to know because this is someone very close to Trump. Uh, I apologize for uh, interjecting there, David. Well, it's helpful. So when you hear Donald Trump admit that he's never once thought to ask God for forgiveness— that's very normal for a Luciferian. That's unheard of for a true Christian. You know, if you're a true Christian and you're Catholic, you go to confession, the sacrament of reconciliation. If you're a true Christian and you're Protestant, you still know that you need to ask God for forgiveness um, for the things you've done wrong. It's only in the Luciferian mindset that they believe in a God of success above everything and forgiveness is for suckers that you see comments like this expressed by members. So uh, we're seeing a, a strong case filled out. Then we take a look at how, how Donald Trump surrounds himself with artwork, with property, um, with symbols. And we see that in his penthouse, his, his New York penthouse, it's adorned with um, Apollo. And he has this great love of Apollo. Well, in the Brotherhood of Death Religion, Apollo is more than one of the 12 principal deities of the Greek pantheon. For brotherhood members, Apollo, as is Lucifer, is an enemy of God. Apollo is the son of Zeus, who is also known in ancient history as the son of Bel or Moloch. Bel is a false god mentioned in the Bible. Right. In ancient societies, Bel, Baal, and Moloch were referred to as the, the abomination of children because the way to worship this god was by sacrificing a firstborn children, child. So my, my point here is if you're a Christian and you're like me, you're very pro-life, you will be deceived if you believe Donald Trump will really do things to help protect the unborn. Uh, that, that will not be part of his agenda. That's what he would say to get elected. That's what he'll say to you know, maintain popularity ratings. But the reality of it is he is not going to do anything to change that. Yeah, because you're going to find a lot of people, and I, I've seen this even recently, who say, you know, that was Trump then. That's not who he is now. He's a changed man. Have you run into similar comments? And, you know, again, how do you respond to that? I mean, we know anyone can change and convert. Uh, again, we, we, we judge someone by their fruit. And, and I guess you can argue on the surface level some of the things he's doing seems to be okay uh, with what he said he would do. I mean, maybe he'll even repeal Obamacare. That would be a positive uh, but the bottom line is, is at the end of the day, I think you and I both agree that we don't believe he has changed, that it's all a front, and ultimately the, the agenda will be served. I, I'm saying very clearly that an enemy of the Catholic Church is, the, is in the presidency. And this is not something new. If we take a look at before Donald Trump, Barack Obama was a member of the Brotherhood of Death, um, as was George W. Bush and William Clinton. Um, if you take a look at presidents going back to 1929, they've all been members in one way or another, with the exception of John F. Kennedy. John F. Kennedy was connected to the CFR, but he was opposed to them. And that's because, because he was opposed to them, and he was sincerely a Catholic, he, he was assassinated. You know, my, my point is, we did not elect change. We elected a person who is a con man for the Brotherhood. Who, who is going to do to the United States what he's done to the Taj Mahal, Trump Plaza Hotel, and other resorts. I mean, just think about it. In uh, 1991, he filed for trans, uh, for bankruptcy at the, the Trump Taj Mahal. In 1992, bankruptcy, the Trump Plaza Hotel. 2004, bankruptcy for the Trump Hotels and Casino Resorts. 2009, bankruptcy for the Trump Entertainment Results. And, and, and what do they need in order to switch off the Federal Reserve to a new monetary system? They need the United States to be driven into and declared bankrupt. And then they can bring out, when people think, oh, great, you know, uh, we're finally free of the Federal Reserve, they'll bring out something even worse than the Federal Reserve, which is privately owned and controlled by the Brotherhood of Death now, 
to a global system based on special drawing rights. And that'll be one of Trump's big objectives. That's why he's going to go after legislation that might help people see into uh, uh, this next dimension. And, and we'll even start to, I think, downsize the Federal Reserve to create chaos in this process of transition. Now, one of the things I know you and I both wanted to stress, because I could just hear people screaming at the top of their lungs, pulling out their hair. Does that mean, uh, David and Eric, we should have voted for Hillary Clinton? <laughs> and uh, of course not. Uh, you know, again, if you, you flew by the Catholic principle of lesser two evils, you went out and, and voted for Trump. You know, I certainly didn't lose sleep over it, but you have to understand the reality of this illusion of choice that we have with our elections. To me, voting is simply a joke, uh, at least at this point. And uh, I wanted to get, you know, maybe a follow-up comment on that, uh, maybe a little bit more on Hillary Clinton. I don't know if you want to kind of talk about her just briefly. I know t specifically we want to talk about Trump today, but I always bring this up when we're talking about Epstein, uh, you know, uh, and the pedophile island, and many people get hung up on Clinton, the Clintons in general. But guess who else was there? Trump. He was a part of that whole scandal. Not sure if you researched and looked into that. I talked with uh, Conchita Sarnoff about this, who's, who's researched it, and there's there's no question about it that he has links to that. There's also some very suggestive photos of Trump and his daughter way back in the day. I don't know if you saw uh, some of those pictures, David, where he's got the you know the black and white dualism shoes on, and and his uh, daughter's wearing the the butterfly the the, the Project Monarch butterflies are all over her, her shirt. I mean, there's a lot of suggestion there, Masonic suggestion there. Uh, maybe you could follow up and talk a, a little bit more about that. Well, yes, I'm aware of all those things. And in the book, again, people can see this for themselves free on, on your website or, or the Teach Peace site. Um, what I uh, have included are things like Hillary Clinton's email with uh, Amslin showing uh, you know, the, this communication of a Moloch animal sacrifice, um, the information about Podesta and his working with his subordinates to set up two Catholic organizations that were not Catholic, that their purpose was to create a revolution in the Catholic Church, to create, you know, to carry anarchy and to, to, to get Catholics to think being pro-choice, being for abortion would be somehow still consistent with the Catholic faith. Um, all of these things that would have been even worse had she become president um, are briefly touched on. And, and fortunately, I didn't have to spend a lot of time on that because she's not the president. But, you know, one of the things the Brotherhood does every year is they have this Alfred E. Smith Memorial Foundation dinner. It's clearly a Catholic dinner. You know, it's a white tie fundraiser to help children in the Archdiocese of New York. And it's at the Waldorf Astoria Hotel in New York City. It takes place the third Thursday of uh, October, it's part of something every every uh, election, presidential election cycle. And when they show Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton at the dinner, they're communicating to Catholics around the, the world, not just in the country, that you know the Catholic Church is somehow approving of both people, neither one is anti-Catholic or working against the Catholic Church, when the truth is exactly the opposite. And, and we saw, fortunately, via Wiki, WikiLeaks, we found that the Clinton campaign, campaign chief was organizing this anti-Catholic revolution. You know, WikiLeaks yeah. really opened up the eyes of a lot of Catholics that there was a anti-Catholic dimension, even a satanic dimension, when they started to expose things like the spirit dinners that Podesta and other Clinton associates were participating in. Um, you know, when they were showing some of these rituals in, in these email leaks, then people realized, wow, Satanism is, is really deep in the Democratic Party. Well, what a lot of people didn't realize is Satanism and Luciferianism are also very deep in the Republican Party. And the answer, don't ever feel paralyzed, don't ever feel it's time to give up. The answer is people need to pray the Holy Rosary for good leaders. When we pray the Holy Rosary, the Blessed Virgin tells us the impossible becomes possible. And we know that the country will get the leaders that we deserve when we do that. Of course, we pray the rosary because we also want the consecration of Russia in union with the bishops of the world so that we, we can bring about a period of peace and avoid the kind of uh, chaos and, 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 and warnings that we hear from 
uh, Our Lady of Fatima and Our Lady of Akita and some of the other Catholic Church approved Marian apparitions. Um, so my, my point is never feel powerless. I mean, we are uh, a church that has always been persecuted you know, during the Roman times, the phenomenal persecution of that time, the, the blood of the martyrs led to the growth of what is now the largest church in the world. Right. And so um, people should not see infiltrations of the Catholic Church and see uh, mistakes that, uh, that are even happening as reasons to move away from the Catholic Church. They should understand the reason why the devil is attacking the Catholic Church with such intensity is because the Catholic Church is carrying souls to salvation. When people participate in the uh, Sacrament of Reconciliation, when they receive Holy Communion, they are receiving graces from God. Uh, that, you know, when, when they understand Mary is the Ark of the Covenant and has special powers over the devil, when they understand Mary's true role, which is explained in the documentary, Akita and the Fatima Secret, when people understand why it's so important uh, that we pray the rosary and ask for Mary to, to, to help us, as well as pray to, to, to all, the, all the saints. When they understand the, the power of what the Catholic Church truly teaches, then they will not let bad people who are pretending to be Catholic, who are actually working to destroy the Catholic Church, they won't let that distract them. And they'll be able to understand that everything that's happening right now is part of what we started off this discussion with in Matthew 24, 24. And that is, if possible, even the elect will be deceived. Yeah, and continuing along that line, I wanted to get your commentary on this. You know, I run into virtually every day, you know, those Protestants out there who are still clinging to this notion that the puppet state of Israel that we see today is the Israel of the Old Testament. And we know that this era came about in the last hundred years or so uh, with the Schofield Bible. And this is very important to understand because from Catholic tradition, we know that the Antichrist is going to rebuild uh, the Third Temple and basically make Jerusalem uh, the capital of the world. And that's what we're hearing talk about right now. And guess whose name is connected to that? Trump, Netanyahu. I wanted you to maybe break this down a little bit further from your research. Uh, well, maybe just Zionism in general, but the connection between uh, if there is any, the Brotherhood of Death and Zionism, maybe a little bit more with Netanyahu and Trump and what, what's going on there, because immediately when I saw that connection, I, I knew this was a red flag as well. Okay, it's important to know that the Brotherhood of Death sets up levels of patsies, and depending on what's happening, they will pick a patsy that will be easy for people to believe and then they'll be able to slither off in the background undetected. And uh, you'll see this in my work on the atomic bomb secrets. When, um, when the, center of the, Catholic, the center of Christianity in Japan was targeted for destruction by the only atomic bomb that had been proven to exist, which was the bomb that detonated over Nagasaki, um, the Catholic Church leadership and all of the missionaries that were prepared to convert you know, millions of Japanese to Christianity, uh, they were killed by the atomic bomb. Right. And the Brotherhood of Death knew that that conversion opportunity was going to be present because the emperor, when he, when he surrendered, he was also renouncing his divinity, which left a huge spiritual void in Japan. Well, the reason I'm off on that tangent is the person that was selected to be the patsy for the decision of selecting the center of the Catholic Church, ever if it ever came out as being known earlier and became an issue for them, was actually a Jewish man, it was Robert Oppenheimer. He was not actually responsible for the selection of Nagasaki. He was officially assigned to lead the target selection team uh, for, for the bombing effort, but his team never put Nagasaki on the list. And so my whole point is, throughout history, uh, Good, faithful Jewish people have been set up by the Brotherhood to be patsies, to be the, be the fall guys. And that they're being set up by people who are not practicing any worship of the God of Abraham. These are people that are practicing either no religion at all or practicing a worship of Satan or Lucifer. And so when you take a look at Netanyahu and, and you take a look at uh, Israeli leaders, uh, they're very often, they're not doing what's in the best interest of, of the Jewish people. 
Uh, they're not even following the religion of Judaism. Right. You know, they're promoting an agenda that is to bring about a new world order. So it's important that we not get confused in that because, you know, there's been tremendous persecutions of, of wonderful people throughout history, and much of that persecution that they're going to set up uh, when the Federal Reserve goes down is going to be on the Chinese, and then the next group that's going to get blamed is going to be uh, the Jewish the Jewish population. And we should always stand up to defend, the, whether it's the Japanese in World War II that were going to internment camps, or it's the Chinese that are being set up and will be set up in the near future, or the Jews, which throughout time are uh, the easy patsy for, for this cartel. You know, we stand up to love one another, not be suckered into hating or fearing other people, then we can make sense of really what is the right action for us in this difficult and confusing time. Yeah, and as a follow-up, folks, listen, I, I have been publicly labeled an anti-Semite. I simply follow what the church has always taught before Vatican II. It's quite clear uh, that the church before Vatican II made it very clear that the Jewish hand was very prominent in the role of killing our Lord. Uh, but the bottom line is, at the end of the day, we know the story ends good. We know the two witnesses will come back and they will convert uh, the Jews at the end of time. They actually will come to the Catholic Church. So not only will Russia be uh, converted here, uh, we'll see a great turnaround in France, in my opinion, uh, with this counter-revolution, but then also uh, the Jews uh, in particular. And we have to remember anyone who stands against Christ uh, is anti-Christ, whether it be Jew or Muslim or, or, or whatever. Uh, but the bottom line is the reason why I always bring that up is because there are a lot of uh, Tal... Talmud, uh, people following the Talmud and the Kabbalah and a lot of these uh, rabbis suggesting now that the Messiah is alive right now and about to appear. And guess what, folks? That's not our Jesus. This will be the false prophet who I've warned about in so many talks, uh, who is the ultimate setup for Antichrist, Maitreya, who has his hand in with the rebuild of the Third Temple. And that's why I think we're so close to certain major events uh, triggering. Um, I don't know if you've seen this. Go ahead. I wanted to build on a little bit. So the Talmud, a lot of that is influenced by the ancient Babylonian mystery religion. And that's why you see things in the Talmud that are, are, are very bizarre and, and certainly completely contrary to Jesus' message to love and serve one another. Um, I think God chose um, the Jewish people for, for, you know, for Jesus being a Jew, for the early apostles, for, for this, for a reason. And I think one of the reasons was he under he he wanted us forever to remember the really wonderful gift that we received from the Jewish people, and not to be confused by the the efforts of the devil to to get us to dismiss an entire group of people or hate them or, or whatever. And that's what I think, unfortunately, you see happen. When, when during World War II, during the Holocaust, or during other moments in history where the Jewish people have been persecuted. And so if we do what God has instructed us to do, and that is to love our neighbors, with, and to love God with all our heart, all our mind, all our strength, and we love our neighbors, even love our enemies, uh, we're not going to make a misstep in this time of confusion. Um, and so I would just say to people, you know, pray for Donald Trump, but at the same time, be educated because the Bible tells us that good fruit comes from a good tree and bad fruit comes from an evil tree. And Donald Trump's life should not be judged on his grandfather or his father. It should be judged on what he has done during his life. And this man has a history of treating not just women, but all the people around him extremely badly. His wives do not trust him. His, his you know, close associates do not trust him. He's a man who will do first and foremost what he thinks will be the thing that will give him the most success and power. And that's a very dangerous person to have in the presidency. And people shouldn't be surprised when he makes some very, very bad decisions. Yeah, and I'm one of those quote-unquote conspiratorial types, I guess, who just will argue, you know, presidents are selected, not elected. You know, I kind of sat back kind of jokingly during the election and, and seeing people get all riled up. And, uh, you know, I, I guess another key indicator for me, too, is most recently, I don't know if you saw this, there was a, a naked statue of Donald Trump and there was a Masonic uh, ring on him. I don't know if they were doing this in, in mockery or jest, uh, but it's quite obvious that more and more people are catching up to you know, his Masonic connections. Uh, I received this 
Scottish coat of arms, I believe it was in 2012. But maybe maybe you covered this in your book. Um, it, and maybe you it, haven't. It but, is. It's in the book on page 74, actually. People can see a picture of Trump's uh, emperor has no clothes statue Masonic ring. And the explanation is provided for why that is there, why that was put on that statue and also put on that statue with some mixed messages. I mean, the truth of it is that statue is communicating something that's very important, and that is Donald Trump, and it's provable with concrete evidence, has secret society connections, mafia connections, which, again, if you understand how the mafia was created by Giuseppe Messini, the mafia was created by one of the key leaders in the Masonic world, the Italian leader of, of uh, this very powerful group working in the late 1800s. And, and so when you look at whether it's the Italian mafia, the Russian mafia, the Jewish mafia, and you understand that it's actually on, on a, a very high level interconnected, and it's interconnected at that brotherhood of death level, um, it's like, okay, all right, we've got a guy who has, has used uh, his wealth and power throughout his life to hurt people. He's bankrupted a number of, of companies. And, 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 you know, I have direct quotes in, in the book from various people that ended up not being paid after performing, you know, work for them and either being close to bankruptcy or being forced into bankruptcy. Um, he, you know, he has, as we all know from the presidential campaign, he has uh, a long list of not treating, treating women uh, in, in, in an appropriate way. He even at one point, I don't know if you remember this, but uh, uh, Ivana Trump, she, she had stated in a divorce deposition that he had raped her back in 1990. I mean, this guy's got problems all over the place. He, he, he settled his Trump University fraudulent business practices right before he was, you know, before he was sworn in uh, with, with last month with a $25 million penalty they paid. And so when you have a guy who has a track record of racist, unfaithful, criminal behavior, um, and you expect that he's going to do something different, especially after he's pillaged and plundered four, four companies in the bankruptcy, came back to life through dirty money. That's how he was able to bring these companies back to life, through brotherhood money, through guys visiting you know, his casino and losing $11 million conveniently when he needed a cash, cash flow infusion. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's always honorable to pray for a person. We should pray for all of us to be better people. But it's, it's really dangerous and not what God wants us to do, to stick our head in the sand and say, um, you, we're going to ignore everything he's done and he's going he's gonna to save this country. I mean, the reality of it is we got to hold him accountable. We have to be as wise as serpents. We have to be as gentle as doves. Pray the rosary for Donald Trump. Pray the rosary for the Pope. Pray the rosary for, you know, for all the things that are important in the world. It's the world's most important prayer, okay? Um, and, and then face each day with courage. And we'll do your best to, to, to teach the gospel, to help people go to heaven. Yeah, uh, the reason why I say, uh, you know, I'm a conspiratorial type in that sense and presidents are selected there's a lot of predictive programming out there in the entertainment industry and just, just in general, really. I mean, it's not even just TV at this point. Uh, I would cite two sources as it relates to uh, Trump. As Eric, I'm going to agree with you. Let me first of all, I think I, when you said that presidents are selected in advance, um, I, you, you probably didn't get this from me and your listeners probably didn't get this from me. Uh, that's one of the key purposes of the Bilderberg Group to meet is they discuss who – are going to be in key positions around the world. That's one of the top functions of that whole organization. Right. So I know for a fact that if you're an outsider candidate, you're not going to get the media attention. So exactly. by the time we get to have a choice between a Republican or a Democrat, it's, it's going to be one of their guys. Yeah. So when they allow Donald Trump, when they allow him to win at the end of the day, to be in that position, you know, what is it? that they want him to do for him, for them, and what is it that they're afraid of him? And the number one thing that they're afraid of him, by the way, is that he's been unfaithful to everyone. And so they are nervous. And this is why, if uh, you ever hear about this, it's a, you want to go into the kind of uh, far past on this stuff, but did you ever hear of a, a game called the Illuminati? It's a, it's a, <laughs> Dave, this is just what I was about to get into, and I'll, I'll allow you to elaborate on that before we get to the Illuminati card game uh, as it relates to predictive programming. 
How about the Simpsons episode back in 2000 where it said he would be elected? And then it goes into uh, how Lisa, who was obviously being, uh, uh, what's her name, Hillary Clinton in this episode, kind of demonstrates how Trump didn't get the job done, so to speak. Many will argue that maybe he gets impeached or maybe he's even quote-unquote assassinated because we're getting into that Illuminati card game where there's indication uh, that that may take place or that propaganda would simply be built up in the mainstream media. So those are the, the two areas that I wanted to cite as it relates to predictive programming was that Simpsons episode back in 2000. And listen, sure. as, jo- as jokingly as that sounds, David, the Simpsons has predicted a lot of things which have come to pass, including 9-11. Uh, Eric, I'm going to build on this, okay? So on page VI in the preface of the book, again, people can access it free on your site or go to vigilantchristian.org and click on the free offer. Uh, you'll see on page VI at the bottom three cards from the Illuminati game. One is Enough is Enough, the other one is called Terrorist Snoop, and the next one's called Pentagon. Now, normally you would just say, well, you know, you make enough shows, you're bound to once in a while hit on a subject like this. But what I want you to note is I was researching for the book I wrote, Vigilant Christian 4, 9-11, The Secret War. I was researching the first death associated with 9-11. And when I was doing that research, I found out that 9-11 had already been planned in the early 1990s, right. okay? And so I found out about a guy named Nigel Finley. He was 35 years old, and he, he died of a heart attack on February 19, 1995. I said, okay, you know what can happen? 35-year-old, he died of a heart attack. Seems a little unusual, seeing as, you know, he made this game with a card showing the Twin Towers being hit by an airplane, the Pentagon being hit by something, um, and, and a card with a guy that looks like Donald Trump screaming, titled it up as enough. But what made it really go beyond the, the realm of just uh, p- perhaps a casual possibility is the fact that the United States Secret Service stormed the company where he worked, seized the firm's computers, okay, and, and basically shut down uh, the, the company yeah. Uh, because they lost everything. So then what happened was the, the company, it's called Steve Jackson Games, they took the United States government to court. They said this was unwarranted. You, know, you guys just showed up you know, with no cause, stole everything, and, they, and the U.S. government actually had to pay a fine because it was unwarranted. And then everybody kind of forgot about it because, again, this happened in the 1990s, right? So here we have now... Why did the Secret Service take that? And then you see these cards showing pictures into the futures of, of, of events that actually happened. No, I, I don't think it's beyond uh, beyond deserving serious consideration. I, and I think it's a well-established fact that you don't get to be ultimately uh, considered for either the Republican or the uh, Democratic, you know, presidential uh, candidacy. You don't you don't get to be at that serious level unless you're a member of the Brotherhood. Yeah, so that's what we're trying to establish here is, folks, listen, this has been long planned in advance. You know, on this Enough is Enough card, at any time, at any place, our snipers can drop you. Have a nice day. And what did we see right before the elections? Wasn't there some guy, you know, claiming that, you know, he was going to kill him and he was carted off? I mean, it was really bad staged. I mean, to me, it was just an obvious hoax. But I think we're going to see that as, 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 it, as we go on into 2017, always this threat of, you know, him being knocked off, because I think they have to hold to the mainstream narrative that he's an outsider, which you and I both agree that he's not. But then also there's another card in there, which you didn't mention, Dave, uh, the charismatic leader card where he's standing up in front of, you know, people being, you know, rah, rah, cheery. And he's got, you know, the blonde hair, the blonde wavy hair you see him from behind. So there's another card, uh, you know, implicating him, uh, you know, what was it, you know, 10, 15 uh, years, 20 years before um, his election. A couple more questions, and if you Eric, really don't... Before, before you move on, I want to share. In my third book, I wrote a book called Vigilant Christian 3, which explains the spiritual reasons for the 9-11 attack. There's a section that explains why the cartel does this, why they show things that have happened or will happen in advance. And it's because in their religion, again, this is the ancient Babylonian mystery religion. In their religion, they believe in something called deception power. And they believe that when they put something on a symbol or something on a currency or on a card or or in a movie, 
and you see it and you don't understand it, it actually creates dark spiritual power for them to help bring that event about. This is why the more frequent the, uh, the document is shared, the more valuable the symbol is. So they put one of the most valuable symbols of all time on the back of the U.S. dollar bill. That's when you look at the pyramid with the all-seeing eye. That's, a, that's one of the Brotherhood's top three symbols uh, that they've had throughout time. And so when you look at um, the, the, the fact that they're doing it not for just fun, they're doing it because in their religion it's like asking right. for a blessing. Yeah, there's no question about that. Uh, they're really sick individuals. Uh, yeah, a few more questions here. And as, as I'm kind of uh, gathering myself here, if there's any other area that we didn't cover any, you know, stone unturned, uh, I want to be sure that we get this all out there, Dave. My next question for you is this is more recent current event. We had Kissinger recently coming out, Henry Kissinger, making the remark that Trump is a con artist and a would-be dictator. Now, anyone who's really looked into this knows Kissinger is a puppet, too, as well. What, what are we to make of this? I mean, they're really just trying to just shove this narrative that he is an outsider down our throats, or are we missing something here? Why is Kissinger now saying that Trump, you know, is a con artist, just like we're saying, uh, and that he's a would-be dictator? Because uh, there's going to be many who would be confused by that comment alone. Okay, uh, this is explained in detail in, in the book. Um, the short version is explained by Colin Powell. You remember one of the WikiLeaks emails was a an email that Colin Powell had sent to his chief of staff, uh, D.D. Mazaletsky. And in that email, he's talking about a meeting that he had at the Bohemian Grove with billionaire Charles Johnson. And what, what Paul Powell says in this email is that Johnson was the only one of the 2000 attendees at the Bohemian Grove to wear the iconic red Trump hat. And so a lot of people who are Brotherhood members, they really do hate um, Donald Trump. Uh, they've either been hurt by him and shady business dealings, or they know that he's just not trustworthy. Uh, they're afraid that he may reveal some secrets that expose them. Okay. You remember before the election, Trump said things about, we're going to find out more information about what really happened about 9-11, things like that. Yeah. They were afraid that in his process of trying to make himself look good and releasing some information like that, that guys like Colin Powell are going to be outed for their Brotherhood membership. Uh, Colin Powell, by the way, is a public, uh, publicly acknowledges he's a high-ranking Freemason. So a lot of these guys, um, you know, it's just, it's just out there. They're known as famous Freemasons. But, you know, what's going on here is Trump is serving the interests of the very, very top of the Brotherhood. Uh, the second and lower levels uh, you're going to see a lot of disagreement. And if he moves in a direction that the very top feels is inappropriate, Trump knows that they will seek to assassinate him, exactly like you said it on the card, right? The warning about the snipers having their and that kind of thing. Trump is, to understand Trump, he's very smart. He's smarter than most people realize. And the best bulletproof vest he ever bought or acquired, I should say, was Mike Pence. Because the Brotherhood does not want Mike Pence to be the next president of the United States. So if there is an assassination of Donald Trump, I guarantee you it will be Donald Trump and Mike Pence simultaneously. Wow, that's very profound. Uh, you know, as I'm sitting here, I know many people are going to be asking this. We're, you know, we're talking and looking forward now, 2017, you know, going on into Trump's regime, if you will. What, what agendas will he serve, uh, you know, to the Brotherhood? You know, again, I've always said, and been out there very publicly and said, I, I think he was, you know, the scapegoat, the stooge, if you will, for this soon coming economic collapse. And ultimately, you know, these anti-Trump Soros funded, uh, quote unquote, demonstrators will come out of nowhere. I mean, listen, you know, the New World Order, they want chaos and disorder on every level. There's no question about it. And I think with the narrative they've built up with Trump. We now have, you know, basically the, the, the Trumps versus the Clintons, if you will, you know, con the quote unquote conservatives versus the liberals. And I think that clash is coming, you know, after the economic collapse and a lot of other events uh, to happen here in this country, you know, probably more false flags like 9-11, things along that line. Uh, what, what, so what do you see as, you know, some of the top agendas that he will try to get across to serve well, the Brotherhood? Well, 
top ones is absolutely signaled by his assignment of Freemason Terry Branstad to be the ambassador of China. This is huge. Okay. So if you think about it, okay, the China bans Freemasons, and yet here Donald Trump, he, he, he gets another brother, a publicly known high-ranking Freemason to be the ambassador of China. So what you're going to see is just this increasing demonization of China. The Chinese are going to be the source for all these reasons why we need to, you know, increase our nationalism. And that's, uh, that's a dangerous thing. I mean, the Chinese, at the end of the day, we need to wean ourselves off of debt. We need to be more self-sufficient. You know, there are bad trade deals. All of that's, you know, this is how the devil works. He bases his ultimate deceptions on some truth. But um, we do not want to be provoking China into some kind of military conflict. That, and, and so while I believe Trump does not want that kind of conflict, he will definitely be pushing the buttons that in the past have, have led to some direct fighting. If you go back just to the 19th century, I think you're going to get great insights to your question, Eric. If you look back with how the Chinese were demonized during the uh, Brotherhood's Opium Wars, so this is the thing. You know, people often they forget that the opium wars were orchestrated and the profits were received by what is now today known as the Brotherhood of Death Cartel. Okay, and they successfully got American people to support all kinds of nonsense, you know, relating to uh, intervening in China by demonizing the Chinese. Some of those early cartoons are, are worth looking at. One of them is in actually the book uh, people, people can see. It's titled The Chinese Must Go. Interesting, interesting, interesting stuff here with Dave Dionisi. Listen, the, the term Trump, I mean, we, we've got the title here, Trump card played. I mean, obviously there's some connection to uh, mo what most people would think of first with the tarot cards. But I'm also just reading a definition here, Dave, and this, this kind of resonates with me. Uh, Trump, here's the definition, a valuable resource that may be used, especially as a surprise, in order to gain an advantage. Exactly. <laughs> Does that not okay. summarize it? That's why this, this, this interview today is titled The Trump Card Play. Exactly. Unbelievable interview. Exclusive talk here with Dave Dionisi. Just unbelievable. This, this, this video needs to be shared, folks. You need to get this out here. We cannot uh, no longer stick our heads in the sand as an ostrich. Listen, pray for the best, prepare for the worst, but people need to know and understand that we are being played. Uh, Dave, I don't know if you have anything else to really add. I will provide a the, the direct link to David's book, not only in the blog, I'll put it in the description box of the video. Help us get this video to go viral. So all you have to do is look in the description box, and bam, you can click on it right there. I'll also put it on my website somewhere. i got to find room. I'm not quite sure where, but it'll be along the right-hand margin uh, somewhere more near the top. Uh, Dave, is there any stone that we didn't uh, – you know, turn over in this particular uh, broadcast. Is there anything else you'd like to get out before we close out? The, the answer is yes. Uh, we would need hours, but fortunately people can go to the book. Uh, for instance, you mentioned The Simpsons. You know that in The Simpsons there's a character, Anthony Fat Tony Salerno, right? It's based, that character is based on one of Donald Trump's top associates. He was working with, you know, Salerno, America's top gangster. I mean, it's just amazing. In, in business meetings, Trump would he would pull out a business card of Roy Kahn, who who represented Fat, you know, Fat Tony Salerno, and he would threaten people in business meetings to give him what he wanted, or he was going to set the mob on him. If you look at um, like Felix uh, Sater, he's another key guy that he was convicted of a 40 million crime involving 19 stockbrokers and other gangsters from poor mafia families back in 1998. This is one of the guys that was Trump's senior advisors on the street with office space provided by Trump. This is a guy that was uh, acknowledged as working for the Central Intelligence Agency with activities, mysteriously enough, that were connected to uh, what eventually happened with the September 11th terrorism. 
You know, Seder, the whole story of Seder is an unpaid consultant with space in Trump offices is huge. You know, the connections of 9-11, people are just beginning to understand. And, and well, by the way, Seder's name came up in 2015 when the Senate was confirming uh, Loretta Lynch as the attorney general because the money he stole was never returned. And yet this guy he receives an award by Israel, the Shabbat, uh, as their, uh, you know, their annual guy of the year award. And then it goes on and on. If you take a look at Trump's relationships with uh, other gangsters, it's, it's mind-blowing. So the fact that media didn't cover this, or even as simple as this, you know, when it was my turn to serve 37 years ago, I went in the military. You know, I served in, and, and uh, uh, I basically left as an army officer. I was an intelligence officer when I, when I resigned. I had an honorable uh, discharge, you know. Donald Trump, he, when it was his time to serve, he used college deferments, and when he ran out of college deferments, he paid a doctor who gave him medical, uh, the medical disqualification. He got classified as 4F, unfit to serve in the military. And now he's commander in chief of the military. I mean, it just, it just goes on and on about why this man, if you think he's going to be the, the president that we deserve, um, uh, you're sadly mistaken. And the sooner you know the truth, the more it can help you deepen your faith, understand what's really going on. And please, I ask everyone, pray the rosary. It'll help you get clarity in these difficult times. Yeah, and just kind of closing, and I'll allow you a few minutes to follow up on this because I know you, you point out some visuals in, in the book here too. The, the main kicker to me by way of hand signs, and again, we follow first what they're saying by way of doctrine, whether it's in the Catholic Church, uh, to kind of point out these uh, infiltrators, if you will. But specifically, even with presidents, to me, it's not coincidental. It shouldn't be seen as coincidental are these hand signs. And again, with Trump, just over and over again, it seems like every uh, interview that he does, every speech that he gives, he's giving the 666 sign of man sign, which everyone would probably commonly know as the AOK -OK sign. Well, that is uh, a highly occultic sign, ties in with the New Age even. And when you go to Maitreya's statue, and again, I take a lot of heat for this, in my opinion, this is who your Antichrist is going to be. And the abom abomination of desolation, it refers to an image. That's what the church fathers talked about. Look at his image. Go to Google right now and type in Trad Cat Knight Abomination of Desolation. You'll see this Maitreya statue giving that exact same hand sign, the 666 hand sign. Francis has been doing it. Trump does it. A lot of your world leaders do it. But is there any other ones that stand out to you? I know you obviously have uh, some related in this book. I'm looking on page 74 right now. Uh, in terms of well, the handshakes of Freemasons, yeah. but the top two that you'll see is his. his there's something called co-Freemasonry that women participate in, and you'll see the uh, the Masonic M that his daughter will frequently make. Yeah. Also, Donald, Donald will form the all-seeing eye triangle with his hands, especially if he gets in a position with another Brotherhood member where they're pushing him too hard. He'll yeah. make that symbol. So if you watch him in interviews, it's it's pretty obvious that those things are occurring. And um, I, this is my final comment. I want people to, to, be, to know that in the history of the United States, this battle between good and, and, and darkness has always gone on. And through prayer, through asking for God's help, you know, the United States has been a great country for most of its history. And what's good in our country can still fix what's wrong. And we need people to be courageous. We need people to be vigilant Christians and with that, we can make make a future where we're talking about a president that we're all proud about instead of a person who's actually working against the Catholic Church. And there you have it, folks. My special guest today, Dave Dionisi, covering the Trump card played, NWO Advancement, Brotherhood of Death. Wow. Uh, need to share this video, folks. Again, let us not succumb to doubt, worry despair again as dave mentions now is not the time to leave the catholic church now is the time to draw a line in the sand and continue to fight to continue to expose we know in the end we have the victory already through our blessed virgin mary where she said in the end my immaculate heart will triumph i just did a talk on this recently uh two days ago dave going uh, researching what the church fathers had to say that this triumph of the immaculate heart is is a triumph over the antichrist and so and I, I quoted various uh, church fathers, St. Uh, Justin the Martyr being one of them. And, and so I believe it's right around the corner. I know many are suggesting, hey, well, maybe it's you know, 50 years down the road. I don't believe so. I believe it's imminent now. It's, it's very close to this character arriving onto the scene. Just my opinion. Uh, but, folks, listen, control what you can control. Control your interior life. 
pray the rosary, wear the scapular. We see the great storm approaching. It's on the horizon. But now is the time as eagles to spread your wings in faith and hope and get ready to fly. Until next time, my good friends, stay safe and God bless.